I'll just go to share screen. And that looks good to me. Hope it looks good to you. So our project today is um, taken from one of the uh, uh, Silicon Valley fourth challenges some months ago. And uh, the goal is to um, imagine that we are doing the front end for a speech output system, not the speech output itself, but the front end. So we want to translate, in this case, numbers to text, and then the speech conversion will convert to an audible form. So as a quick demonstration, we want to be able to convert the integers from zero to 100. So the steps I went through first uh, worked out a, a um, case structure, had to go back and refresh my understanding of it, the quirks of it. Then we process by decades. Each decade seems to have its own characteristics from uh, the zero, zero decade to uh, 99 to 100. And then we're gonna find one of the key exceptions is the difference between the number 90 and 91 or the even tens and beyond. And the key here is that if we're saying the number 91, we say 90 and then one, but the number, even number 90 is not said 90 zero. If it was consistent, we'd be saying 90 zero, but uh, of course we do not. And then there's special handling for the numbers 10 to 19. And finally, we want to be able to detect an out of range error. I had a couple of ahas on this project. The first one is that I'm using Win32 fourth, and it has a, quite a rich selection of string comparison, string analysis, and so on, but it does not have string concatenation. And so I searched through over and over and over saying, why is there no string concatenation? So I finally had to write one. And this actually was the most time consuming uh, part of the process because I wrote it four different times. Yes, yeah, we do in fourth, I wrote it once and it, it, it worked. And then I realized I had a couple of logical flaws. And so I rewrote it, rewrote it, rewrote it. And uh, so in this case, we have two input strings, they're counted strings. One is at address one, the other is located at address two. And then at address three is a workspace that has to be at least as large as the two strings concatenated. And I'm really very happy with what I came up with. Uh, it, it's uh, amazingly uh, compact, amazingly terse. So building on that, the first element was to handle units. So um, we have an input number coming in and we uh, do a 10 mod on it, which gets us what the, uh, the units are. And then using a case statement, we can convert this to a string. So uh, the case of zero gives us the pure text Z-E-R-O, all the numbers up through seven, eight, nine, and at the uh, integer value of nine, we would get the pure text of nine. And at the bottom is uh, uh, a, uh, an abort signal in case there's a uh, translation error, which should, should not occur, technically shouldn't occur. The, uh, the second decade is from 10 to 19. And in English, most of these have the uh, number with a teen added at the end. Number zero, of course, is said just as 10. Then we have 11, 12, and 13. Uh, notice 13 is not 13, it's 13. So that's a special case. With 14, we can just use the number four and then add teen on the end. So coming into this, the units has already been converted. So in this case, we use the, uh, the word add teen. And we look above and see that uh, add dot teen uh, takes, uh, it does the units and then it brings in the string of teen. So at this point, there are two strings on the stack. The, uh, there's a string, uh, the, the addresses of the strings. There's one of them, which is the, uh, the address of the units portion and then the address of the teen portion. And later these will be concatenated together. So uh, at the, uh, toward the end, we see 18 would be the number eight and added teen, nine is uh, number nine and then adding teen. So now we are looking at the decades, the higher decades, 
like in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 15s. In this case, we have to allow for this quirk that, uh, for example, you see in the comments there, we say, we're building a hyphenated number like uh, 91. So we say 90 and then append to it one. But if the, um, it's an even 90, then we just use the word 90 itself. So that little if then else uh, handles the detection of an even decade. So at the bottom, we see that nine zero yields 90, 91 uh, uh, yields the, the uh, check string 91. And this logic, of course, is applied at each decade, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. Now we're getting a wrapper that begins to do all the decades. So we bring the number in. First, the, uh, the dupe 100 greater than is an error check to see if we're out of range. As long as we're in range, we take our input number, we divide by 10, and this gets us into the decade. So at this point, we know are we be, uh, between uh, uh, 0 and 9, between uh, 10 and 19, and so on, up to 90 to 99. If we get a uh, quotient of exactly 100, that means we've divided 100 by 10 and we get 10. And so this just gives us the uh, string 100. If we get a nine, this tells us in the 90 decade. And so we get a, uh, the C quote gives us the, the prefix 90, and then we do the decade. So then we apply the, uh, uh, that uh, decade function, which gets us handling between zero and nine. So we work down all the way to the bottom at uh, the, the three decade prefix is <clears> 30, <throat> the decade prefix is a 20. And now when we get down to one and zero, we have special conversions that do the tens and do the units. So with a case statement, it becomes very systematic. We have to handle each of three special cases, but it all glues together quite well. This is the overall wrapper. The uh, convert dot one in green, you see, converts one decimal number. The uh, all dot decades does the translation for all of the decades. The output text concatenated uh, moves the two strings concatenated together into the output text. So all decades gets us two input strings. The output text concatenate joins them together and puts them into a workspace. And then finally, output text count type displays the output. Finally, we put a do loop around it. So we set the range from zero to 100, which is done by 101, zero do. The i4.r2 spaces, this formats the number we're converting. And then we do the single conversion, convert one. And this is done then 100 times. And now we see example of how it actually operates. So this is the live output. The uh, previous wrapper text gives us, takes, uh, you know, the first case is the number zero and it outputs Z-E-R-O. We go down, down the column down to nine. Then we are handling the first decade uh, or the second decade from 10 to 19. And of course it operates correctly. And now we're into the big numbers and you see that uh, 20 converts properly. It doesn't give us a 20 zero, it gives us 20. And then 21 down through 29. And as an example, the last decade is 90, down to our final, final number of 100. And the okay at the end lets us know this is we're done by four. <clears throat> now in the next slide, we're going to see the actual voice output. And I wanna point out, I did not do a voice output conversion routine. We did the text conversion, and then I fed this into an online voice conversion system, so we can actually hear what it would sound like. 100, okay. So, the... Uh, the, the front end we've written does front end properly do the text conversion that would then later be converted into sound. Now the next case is in Spanish. I said, well, if we did this conversion in English, uh, 
let's look at and see what it'd be like in Spanish. Now that second decade from 10 to 19, it has the most irregularity into it. So that's the one I did in Spanish. And I found out that uh, the, once I had this overall routine done, adding the Spanish conversion took about two minutes. The entire application, what with all the details I did, maybe it was four hours. But the, by, the, by the time I got that whole code done, bringing it into Spanish took this decade, took like two minutes. So uh, the code is quite portable. And we saw again, Spanish has uh, the uh, similar characteristics of English, where the tens are, are, are uh, done by uh, yes, once, dos, and crece, course, quince are all special words. Then from 16 to 19 is 16, 17, 18, and 19 are all done by taking 10 and 6, 10 and 7, 10 and 8, 10 and 9. So there is Spanish, and now we'll hear the Spanish translation. 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, 13, 13, 14, 14, 15, 15, 16, 17, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, so in summary, uh, the programming took more effort than I thought. I thought this was going to be kind of a little quick thing and just type it out and type the code the first time through, it's going to work. Well, I found out due to the irregularities in, in language, uh, there were more special cases than I realized. And the big aha, as I mentioned, was that Win32 fourth has no string concatenate. And so I actually spent the most time on that. And um, as I said, I rewrote it four times until I got one that I was really satisfied with. We see that there are many irregularities in the low numbers. And I guess our children and we learn by memorization. Uh, we certainly don't have the algorithm in our head on how we do a difference between 11 and 17. And I guess non-English speakers, I don't know how they learn. I guess I don't know how they learn it. They just, they just learn it. And finally, uh, in voice response, the voice response system that I used online handled the hyphen properly because proper English would be to write numbers uh, like 21 as 20 hyphen one. But if you're doing a real speech input translation, the hyphen would, hyphen would not be present. So here's a postscript. This is a little, a little wrap, a little uh, conclusion. After I thought back on this, um, Back in the early days of FIG, we did the, um, the FIG implementation workshop. And one of our members was Mike O'Malley. In 1975, he was doing speech research at the University of California. And he was a consultant to Texas Instruments and, and uh, guided them on their original Speak and Spell. The Speak and Spell was the very first game toy that did natural language output. So you could put in uh, words, you could type in uh, numbers, you could do math, and you could play some word games. Uh, it was all on a portable uh, uh, basis, about the same size as a uh, normal tablet today. And so, as I remember right, his fee on this for the consulting work and transferring rights to he had patented some of this, and so allowing them to use the patents and his consulting I believe he got a fee of a million and a half dollars, which is about $8 million today. So at that point, uh, Mike was pretty well off. So he retired. And then within the fourth interest group, he developed the Texas Instruments 9900 Big Fourth implementation. And I did note uh, subsequent to that, uh, about another 10 years later, he and his wife purchased the Berkeley Daily Planet newspaper. At that point, it was a, a print newspaper and it was kind of struggling, but the two of them became benefactors. They bought it, uh, they continued it as a print newspaper sometimes, and now it's gone in line. So it is uh, an online newspaper and it's currently going quite strongly. So we can see how fourth technology can become practical can be monetized and it can lead to a good retirement. So do we have any questions?